Welcome back to Phaser TV, ladies and gents, here for Star Series 11. I'm DDK, joined by James, as always. And we do have, yes, that's right, a team from the United Kingdom. Can you believe it? They're going to be playing against LDLC. It is the Lone Rangers. I'm, I'm curious how this is going to go. Yes, this is a recently announced UK team with um, Huds G, Fearless, Weber, and the other two guys. Okay, I got it written down here just in case. Release, Fearless, Huds G, Weber, and Rattlesnake. It's the one and the only Rattlesnake. And they've been, you know, spotted here, there, and everywhere. I think Rattlesnake, you know, gave it a go a few times, joining some teams. I think he was in, was it Mouse Sports at some point? You know, I think he was jumping around, but nothing really stuck. And this is now kind of what could be considered maybe somewhat of an all-star UK lineup. And we're actually jumping into the knife round, so we can let the game do the talking for us, which is wonderful, because we've been talking all day, James. Yes, we have indeed. And uh, yeah, this is a recently announced UK roster who are going to try and um, have a serious attempt at making something of themselves. So <laughs> with, with, with um, all their kind of, like, one, one um, issue with the, with the teams in the UK is that there are roster changes after almost every event so i think these guys are going to try and uh, i think they're in it for the long run here well hopefully they are fingers crossed you know um i encourage all the uk guys to share their support i know there's uh um lots of kind of you know not everyone can get along um in the kind of top echelon of ukcs at the moment and you know there can be infighting people here and there none of which i'm privy to which i'm quite happy about <laughs> um, but hopefully these guys are, we'll, we'll, we'll be able to stick it f together for a little while and kind of find enough time to gel as a team and see what they can do. So, I'm going <laughs> to NB Realist King. Yeah, because uh, Rattlesnake tagged up as what was it? Rattled the real king. So, uh, you know, MBK had to respond. <laughs> you know, so either way, LDLC had a pretty promising result today uh, to. Zero over NIP on Dust2 and Inferno, which yeah. is a very nice uh, a nice series of results there for sure, considering that it was only yesterday that they had a pretty shocking result. I think it was something around the scoreline of 16-3, something in that ballpark, 16-5 against Epsilon, which is something... Was it Epsilon? It was Epsilon, wasn't yeah. it? Was it? Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's Epsilon, which is something that shouldn't have happened. Um... Yeah, NBK was tweeting earlier and uh, on the internet, no less, and he was saying that um, <laughs> LDLC have gone through some um, structural changes mm. recently. So uh, some roles are different in the team now, and their approach to certain situations is different. We don't have any more detail than that. Um, I do wonder if if maybe in-game leader's gone back to happy or yes, something. I the, the really. Uh, the way the post was written gave me the impression that maybe, like, you know, part of the uh, change was related to his role as well. So I don't know if that's the in-game leader role that has changed or something else. And yeah, we'll have to see how things actually go here. But, of course, on this pistol round, we're seeing a pretty passive start from both sides. And there's a small gamble at the beginning where LDLC just stacked three players long just in case there was a long rush. But we have the nades being set up for this short peek here. It's going to allow them to at least just have a little look and see what they can go and find. And it looks like they're going to go straight for the drop here. Very fancy stuff going for that, that B split in the end. Very fancy stuff indeed from the low Rangers. They want to start this one off in style. Going to actually pick off Kiyoshima by the window. And it's like Smith hiding in that smoke. Very tricksy position there, going to take down one as well. They're in the site now though, and the bomb is surely soon to be planted. And we do have the rotation coming in from LDLC, who are perhaps flustered at this uh, opening strategy from the Lone Rangers. Can MBK from Dark and Shoxy from the window. Here he goes after the flash, and it's not going to quite work out as it is a great defense of the site from the Lone Rangers. So all good in the United Kingdom so far, but uh, how long can it last? Who knows, when's the Scotland vote? <laughs> <laughs> so um, that was a oh great dear. start there for, for the Lone Rangers. Some unpredictability there. Um, these are, that tactic is something LDSC could not have possibly prepared for. We have got the double scout purchase, which we're seeing more and more often these days, uh, with Shoxy and Smith holding the scouts. We have Smith in mid, and Shoxy is... It was with him in mid Also well. mid, going, looking for the double, the double pick. Nice shot by Smith. Shoxy going to go down though, so that's unfortunate for them. But 
Rattlesnake is really low, so perhaps they can use this player who's in dark to actually take him down. He is very, very close range. It's actually happy just waiting there with the P250. Gonna come in. Oh, there he go. Does get the kill. Looking for the next one. Takes two down, which is actually a good result. They do, do actually do it pretty much the okay amount of economic damage that round, so they can. I think they're going to feel pretty happy about that. Wasn't and by bad. the way, James, yep. no politics, please, on stream. Oh, I, 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 I sincerely <laughs> apologize. Um, Lone Rangers Never did again. have an MP7, however, so he didn't go for the full buy. So it won't be the uh, economic damage that it could have otherwise been, as uh, I believe released to pick up their drop scale or that round. Not sure what the other guy had, but we're going to see an early push here from three players. Passive play there from release going towards B, but rotating back towards T spawn. As they are expecting another eco, they're going to want to stick together for the trade kills here where they can. It's a mixture of uh, that and map control, really. So we can see Release just hanging around, keeping an eye on lower tunnels, making sure no one's rotating uh, from B via tunnels, and etc. Keeping their options open for the time being. Yeah, I like this so far. Just playing it as you would expect, a very passive defensive round for the anti-eco. We're seeing LDLC try to get pokes in here and there, but it's not going so well as we see the Lone Rangers slowly working their way up onto the bomb site. And with a match like this, no one knows what can happen exactly. You've got a lot of talent on the UK side here. And as they push in, we're going to see them just, you know, take liberties as they use the rifles against the pistoling LDLC. So, Smith, soon to be sent to his grave note. Yes, and there it is. The so three to zero. Now we get the buy from LDLC. This is, though, the position where things really went all wrong for LDLC in that match that they did lose so severely against Epsilon. And it was off of these clutch rounds where LDLC were always fighting back on the economy from this, uh, this, this poor start. So hopefully it doesn't go quite so poorly for them this time as it did against Epsilon so recently, but we'll have to see. Lone Rangers here with two Galils, and we have no helmets on LDLC, which means their Galils are going to be as good as AKs for this round. And we've got a B rush coming in here, but a bomb has been dropped, and there are already only, well, there's, there is only one play remaining now for this side, which is going to be released here. So uh, that has not gone in their favor whatsoever, and those Galils will be rendered useless. I, I kind of respect it. They're, they're just like, let's just rush B I, they on the buy round. Economy, yeah. I kind of respect that, but at the same time, definitely, you know, a team like LDLC, you've got to give them some credit. Yeah, well, I mean, I, I, it seems to me that Lone Rangers currently are just trying to be as unpredictable as possible. And uh, I suppose they're expecting, as they're a brand new team, you know, essentially, as far as I know, this is their first uh, match together. So, you know, with limited practice, I'm sure they will have been practicing um, off stream against other teams. But, you know, this, is, this may be the first real chance for them to use their strats. So, uh, yeah, the first official match, as I'm being told. Um, so, there's something to be said for, um, you know, lack of, of running their drills in real matches, etc., and seeing how they go. So, um, but against a team of this caliber of individuals, it uh, seems at the moment they're just going for the unpredictable plays here, so they can't be anti stratted essentially. I do like this from LDLC. They, they understand that, look, this is a team that can frag us. These, these guys are really skilled. They know that. They know that that's not going to be the problem of, of this UK lineup. So they are just playing it passively. A 2B setup, no one in mid, in mid really, and just a very solid three-man stack on A to begin the round with, as we're seeing now where they're starting to peek into mid. But generally speaking, they are giving a lot of respect, I feel, to the Lone Rangers um, by not doing any aggressive moves just yet. And we can see this push on short, coming in now onto this A-bomb site. And looks like the Lone Rangers are slowly getting some ground. Molotov going in on top of the site. We do have Weber at the back here on the flank. Definitely going to be sticking around to make sure that no one can backstab them just yet. But they can't quite get the bomb down right now. LDLC coming in. Very, very close range with those rifles. Coming up from crossover. And it's going to be happy now to take the frag onto Rattlesnake. We have Weber now alone on shot. And they just couldn't get that extra few inches onto that bomb spot to get that bomb actually down there. So very, very well handled. Uh, space control there from LDLC. Yeah, they were they were peeking up and up and up and up short with the AWP from uh, Phyllis, I believe. Just wanting to get that pick and then just really bum rush the site once they got the pick, but the pick was never there. We had one LDLC player in pit and the other one was uh, on the slope, not showing to short. So, you know, waiting for that pick that never came. That so much time ran down and the bomb, the bomb is down in the middle of mid. And Phyllis, let's get the trade kill there. Sort of take back control of that area. Uh, we have still got four P250s here. Haven't managed to pick up that weapon. And 
Smith will be covering the mid doors for the time being. Choksi currently holding the angle on short, where we may find some terrorists shortly. Um, maybe backing off now, expecting expecting in rush, trying to keep the AWP further away rather than closer. NBK will go down to Phyllis's P250, and now they may have be in good stead to uh, take the site if they do it quickly, unless Shoxi gets a few in a row. And they have shown the propensity for those short pushes so far. The Lone Ranger's not only six rounds in, but we have seen a fair share of these short pushes. It looks like they're trying to give the impression that they're going somewhere else, just hanging around short for the moment. But with the 30 seconds left, it seems that LDLC don't know really, really know what's going there. It looks like they've sold the fake to them, and now here comes the late rotation from LDLC. They need to push up short really fast. And here goes Shox. He does get one. Can he get the next one? Going for the shot, not quite connecting. Fearless to make the kill onto Shoxi, opening up the site, but Kiyoshima has something to say about it. With a quick double there, looking for the triple spray down onto Weber, but Weber is able to return the kill, making it into a one on one. Going to get himself the bomb down, but Smith is so close. Weber, no idea of Smith's position, and he's going to get taken out. And it looks like the Lone Rangers will get the bomb down, but they will not get the round. Smith's going to get that defuse, and it's going to be three to two now in favor of the Lone Rangers, but LDLC is slowly climbing back. Their economy, seemingly, is, is looking great. That was good economical damage from them. Um, it seems that Smith, is he going to buy the AWP? Let's see. Because he's giving the AWP to Shoxi. Ah, double AWP. Okay, so Shoxi looks to be playing uh, short with the AWP for the time being, and Smith is going to pick up the second one and go mid. So, again, if they do lose one round, uh, they may be forced to eco LDLC. So, Lone Rangers is 3-3, so they're not doing terrible at the moment here, but they need to really get some more economical damage and you know the uh, LDLC did survive with only one player that round so that was good but they need to get the rounds on the board as well we do have the double stack in mid at the moment looking over the smoke so uh, it's got Kiyoshima just well, there's a the smoke they're preemptively waiting for it to arrive um, knowing that the op opposition are expecting Smith to be smoking mid uh, sorry playing mid so they've smoked him off but they were ready in advance there will be no push from short just yet though but there's nobody on the B side for LDLC. They're really expecting the kind of mid or A push here. This is really interesting. Definitely, they are really stacked towards A right now. There's ac actually nobody in the B bomb site, which is very curious. And the Lone Rangers are posturing towards that B split or that B play at the very least. And it's like Kyoshim is going to be able to get the frag there. Of course, that stack is going to be spotted and they're going to dart back to the B bomb site. If the Lone Rangers had seized the moment, got in a bit quicker, might have been a bit easier, but they rush in nonetheless, looking for the frags. It is an even situation so far, one apiece, but there is Fearless with the connection to Kiyoshima's head with the AWP to make things go their way. But Shoxi coming in, looking for the shot, takes down the planter, and that is going to put a huge thorn in the side of the Lone Rangers, who are now just down to our HUDs. And uh, Hazji has a lot of work to do now with an orphan two rifles left on the playing field here for LDLC and MBK will quickly finish him off and that will be the round there for LDLC who are definitely bringing in some momentum and it looks like the Lone Rangers are uh, in trouble on the money. That was unfortunate. The T's were going for the plant behind double stack there which shields from door but nobody was covering window. Shoxi looked in, got a free kill on the first guy then got then won the 1v1 on the second guy with Hudson remaining in the tunnel there. So that was uh, just unfortunate for Lone Rangers. It is going to be at 4 3 to LDLC. And the Lone Rangers are going to force by here. Still going to try and uh, keep that economic pressure up on the CTs. And we can see at the moment there, money is looking a bit ropey at the moment. Smith with only $50 in the bank here. So again, they're still going to be in good stead if they can manage to just clear the CTs off the map here and take a round. We can see this uh, big presence in the dark and also, you know, looking towards those double doors. So we would expect that a B split is a very, very real possibility here for the Lone Rangers as they are ready themselves to push up. And, and we can probably check that we can see Rattlesnake moving back up there and Kiyoshima getting the spray down over towards mid. And that is going to really hamper this rush as they try to salvage it. The players from Dark trying to do what they can, but it's going to be Rattlesnake dealt with ease and Weber left alone against five, surely not, as he is stuck there just on the exit of Dark, trying to just work his way back into safety. Maybe keep that weapon alive, looking for the flank. And it is coming, but Weber has too many places to look. And not enough time. And it's going to be Smith to take him out for another round there for LDLC, forcing TLR onto an eco. They could potentially force up here as well. Um, but it looks like they are indeed going to go for the 
eco, uh, which would allow them to get AWPs in the next round as well. So probably the more sensible decision as it is only 5-3 at the moment here to LDLC as Ooh. they push lower tunnel. And release is going to get the frag on Smiths, but Shocks is going to get back on, on Weber, and it is going to be 3 versus 4 here in favour of LDLC. Look at the, the actual like control of the map here from LDLC. They have the entire middle chunk of the map. Dark on lock, pretty much. MBK's got short on lock. They have middle on lock. There's, there's only so many places left that TLR can actually be, and this is something that LDLC are going to easily read. Um, they're going to have one guy on B to check you know, in case there was someone moving from upper, upper dark, and they also have one guy actually on the site. We'll have to just check quickly who that is. Should be Shocks there, indeed. He's waiting, lying there very patiently with that AWP, holding his breath almost as he's expecting someone to come in. But Huds, are you actually going to find a frag in lower dark? And that is definitely going to allow his teammates to maybe have more options to play with. But there is only 40 seconds left now. I wonder if Shoxy spotted a shadow there. Because he um, quickly pulled out the CZ in case he was facing multiple enemies. And then just ran away and does get the bomb down there. And that's going to be the end of the round here. So I'm expecting to see at least one AWP in this next round from the Lone Rangers. And I think, you know, they seem to be like, we've seen them kind of creep and try and creep into the bomb, B bomb site. We've seen them try and creep up short. Um, it seems they're going for kind of, you know, pushing um, critical areas with lots of numbers, but not really, I think they're a bit passive on, on when they're going for the clean peak. And somehow Fearless is on 12 HP after being shot by Smith in mid. Yeah, Smith's going super aggressive. MBK coming in to give him a hand there from short. And even Smith's unit on middle actually has a bit of backup too. So, oh, release! Bullet number one connecting with Kiyoshima. Uh, that is massive right there. Now the lines are a bit more thinned out here for LDLC. And Smith is, you know, hurrying towards that defense there on the B bomb site. Looks like it's going well for them though. And the Lone Rangers are still making their way in. And this is going to be quite difficult to actually stop this take of the B site now. And we have Hudz G on the flank. He's going to be able to take down MBK with ease. And it's looking very good now for the Lone Rangers. Perhaps they could stop the rot here. And here is Happy up the stairs trying to get the kill. Manages to pull it off. That is a big win there. They can get a, a pincer of movement coming in from Dark. And from the double door area here in front of the B bomb site itself. There goes the Molotov into the back plateau as the nades go over. And it must be time to go in here. They are good. Two frags from LDLC. They even find the third. And quick succession. And that will be the defuse for LDLC. What a wonderful retake. But almost, I mean, heart-wrenching for TLR, who, who had that round, perhaps. Yeah, that's unfortunate for them. And uh, the CT's economy is running away now. Shoxi and I think it was uh, possibly Kiyoshima both started with just under... 16,000 at the beginning of this round, so CT's not going to be ecoing for a while, and Lone Rangers are just going to have to win those duels at the moment. Smith's going for the shot again, doing what he does. You know, Smith's taking a lot of liberty with these uh, mid picks. We've seen this in many games, perhaps more aggressive than one would have would have pinned him down to be. Uh, perhaps, you know, one would have thought of different names for, for such orping maneuvers as Smith has been pulling out here, but he's been getting the results for LDLC, and with a pick like that, Rattlesnake down at the beginning. And Rangers need to respond. There is the response onto Shoxi over it long, but there's still one more player there. And this means that the Lone Rangers can't actually grasp that area just yet. MBK going to switch out for the AWP that was dropped there by Shoxi to lock down the long area. And we have the Lone Rangers slowly making their way up short, trying to get, get all of the, the control of the map that they possibly can before they initiate any kind of a play. You can see the Molotov going into deterring them. Very well timed, actually, by Happy. As the smoke dissipates, he can move forward from some more ground here. Weber ready with the smoke. Happy might peek in just the right moment. He does get the headshot onto Weber. And that is the bomb. He just saw it. And that call's going to go to his teammates. We're going to see a reaction here as they do move around very quickly, all leaving their positions to converge onto this bomb that was dropped. Smith's going to take down Fearless over on mid. And we've got Kiyoshima coming in from the other angle to confuse and just mow down Huz G. Release there, trying to do what he can, but it is not enough. Happy coming in, and that key frag was a massive on the bomb carrier. Yeah, we're seeing solid CT rounds here, and great aggression from Happy and his teammates at exactly the right times, as we see on saw in the beginning there with Smith's uh, flash over the double doors and then peak. That's excellent play by him, and uh, just good decision making and great timing there from Happy as well on short. 
all the information they needed. Um, they could expect the opposition to be around the bomb. Big push up mid there from Happy though. Look at that, just runs up the double doors. And I can't believe it because did, did, they, did he not understand that perhaps an AWP was alive? Well, after Smithy rips your head off when you're in T-spawn in the previous round, are you going to stand there for another one? That's, I mean, that's a good point. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's taken, he's taken yeah. a lot. And it's, it's, kind of, uh, it's kind of like Thorin said in that podcast where you know, when, when a situation goes bad for you, how do you react and, and, and how, does your, how do you play against how they react? And it can even count between rounds at the beginning of rounds, as we saw there from Happy. Yeah, it was beautiful stuff. And it does trade one, one to one, so this does actually help. Uh, tease massively, but we see uh, MBK, you know, he finds that there's no one defending over at Longhouse. He's going to push straight up there. Bomb picked up by Fearless as well as the kill, but they are starting to have real problems with their positioning right now. They are sandwiched on short with two LDLC players from the lower dark slowly on the approach. And we do have it, what must be Shoxy on the bomb site. This is going to be incredibly difficult here. And here goes release. Oh, he gets a key kill onto Kiyoshima there. And that is definitely going to even things up as Smith and Shoxy take their frags and the bomb does drop on short. So this is a big problem now for release. Facing two AWPers, 20 seconds left. This is probably not doable. I'm sure he's going to try to save this and maybe find, maybe as if there's an upgrade somewhere in AWP, that would be wonderful. It's almost like the T's were the CT's in this round. The aggression from LDLC is almost insurmountable at this point. You know, like you, you sort of tactics from the Lone Rangers at the beginning of this match where they were trying to be as unpredictable as possible and be unexpected. And now LDLC are playing them at their own game and just being in all the right spots at the wrong time for TLR. And uh, it's paying off in spades at the moment. 9-3 to LDLC. I wonder if the, the MBK pushing and finding no one guarding long sets a scary precedent for, uh, for LDLC if they all feel you know, that they can take more liberties with a push through the long the long house because it is pretty risky but mbk you know having done it once now he might have a good feeling for how they play it and he's going to take down a quick eco frag there against hushi and they're all gonna just rush through mid and see what they can find they do actually pick up a kill onto kiyoshima there but they do get gunned down from the back by happy and just caught in between the uh, the cz of smiths and happy cz it's not going so well for them but as expected they did only get one frag so far smiths though on one hp shouldn't really be facing here and it uh, looks like they will finish finish off the last man without losing Smith. So that's a good result there from LDLC. Yeah, with the money they have in the bank now, I don't care. I don't think they care if they lose if they lose a player who's on one HP or not. It's probably worth yeah, them point. worth <laughs> them just <laughs> applying the pressure as much as possible anyway, just not giving mm -hmm. them a second to think here. Ten three, two rounds remaining on this first half for the Lone Rangers to try and get back into this game here. We're only three rounds out of a possible thirteen so far. Yeah, I mean, Joe Smith's going for the pick again. Once more, he gets it. That flash over the top and the peak, the timely peak, does reward once more. And Shoxy also picks himself up a frag over by Long. Looks like they're trying to take it, but Shoxy with number two. Is there going to be number three? There it is on the head of Hud's G. And it's just released once again. I feel like he's been found, found you know, finding himself alone all too often here. But he is a Lone Ranger, so... Yeah, I know, I know uh, release hasn't been playing as much competitively at the top tier as we've previously seen in previous years. And the same um, could possibly be said for, for Rattlesnake. I don't know yeah. how, how much of the um, opponent's play he's been able to see. Um, I, know, I know he, he works a lot. Um, so, you know, like those, those, those peaks from Smiths with the flash, we're used to seeing them, but you have to wonder if these guys are used to seeing them and how, how do you adjust them on the fly to such a tactic? Like, you basically, uh, I mean, you can't really just forfeit control of mid, so, you know, <coughs> it's a difficult decision here. Yeah, I think uh, the way LDLC have been playing actually tells the story a lot. They, they do respect this team, they respect the players and the, what they're capable of skill-wise. That's no question. But when it comes to tactic, strategy, team play, these are the areas that the Lone Rangers will be suffering on through, through lack of uh, gameplay time, through lack of playing together, through lack of sitting on, on, the, on the server and watching the scene grow and develop when it comes to strategy and metagames. So th these are a lot of things uh, for them to catch up on um, as certainly I think you're, you're very right. They have been largely inactive in the scene as of late, which is what is exciting to see, you know, seeing them come back into the freight. And we have a very slow round here from both teams. We one apiece, so it's an even situation, but of course, we're going to go for a bit of an aggression here. Shoxy takes short by Storm with a quick little flash over the fight. Looks like Release going to take Shoxy down, though. And this is uh, the bomb spotted, I think, from Shoxy, so they know where the bomb is. 
Although, as it's... Oh, MBK is going to go for it. Just flashing himself out there. Perhaps that flash missing. But oh, he whisked the shot with the orb. And MBK goes down. And this is a big opening now onto the A bomb site here for the Lone Rangers as they go in. And Smith gets caught on the flank. And Kiyoshima is the last man left who is over by short. And he's going to make his way very quickly to see what he can accomplish here. Does get frag number one. This one by the slope, though, flashing him and uh, using all the nades that they have to try to delay him. Kiyoshima, though, not to be toyed with, not to be fooled with. Here he comes, looking at the angle, but there it is. The most wonderful of shots, camera shots, yeah. right at the end there. It's the highest sky cam possible. <laughs> and it did it for me automatically. I didn't even have to touch anything. It was great. Um, and we're going to see an 11-4 half hit. Verdi LC, perhaps, at, uh, at periods, with a bit of a poor start, with a, a blinding pistol round, with a quite unorthodox strategy um, that we saw from them, you know, jumping down short, going for the B-split, something that I don't think I've seen in Go, but it's something I've seen in Source, actually. Mm. Um, so pretty nice stuff from the Lone Rangers, made it work, but 11-3 is the result. NBK with uh, five kills in that first half, but worth noting here that uh, the scoreboard does not tell the whole story. He is the man who plays long from pits normally in this uh, in Dust2 on the CT side, and he wasn't really challenged on, on Dust2, uh, on, on long. So I, I'm not sure if there was, I think there was maybe one push like significant push through long. So he's he's doing his job and just holding them off there and uh, is likely getting killed during rotations to other parts of the map. So um, shutting down long completely for pretty much the entire half uh, was a great help to his team there. And this is going to be an important round for Lone Rangers. Um, winning this round could potentially make it 11-7. Um, they are going to be up against uh, superior tactics from LDLC at this point. And we're going to have four people going towards the B-bomb site for LDLC. And Shoxi just hanging around the mid area looking for some heads. We'll have to see if there's any heads to be found for Shoxi. As Weber closes the distance to the double doors there, he wants to actually find out who was knocking at the door. And it's going to be MBK who actually takes down release. And in they go onto the site. The bomb plant shouldn't be too far away. But it looks like TLR are very close to this, and they're going to be peeking in immediately, looking for some frags here, trying to abuse the players from LDLC. Gosh, we're going to do a plant safely behind those boxes. As a happy in a very sneaky position here, not going to be found in time. And Rattlesnake will be, fought, be uh, actually one going down to that. And now Happy can flank up from the double doors, so the pressure is really on here for TLR, and it's falling apart. LDLC with the pistol round, and that makes it 12 to 4, and perhaps. Even even more. Small notes. There were four Glocks in that round, and NBK went for the P250, which um, all the all the pistols in the pistol round will be one shot to the head and dead. Um, the P250, though, it does have quite a nice recoil. So if you know how to use it well, it may, it may be a preferable weapon. But also, shots to the chest should do more damage through the Kevlar as well. Ranges too. It's pretty. I guess the mid range is still pretty good. I think pretty optimal. Yeah. Not quite as good as the 5.7 though. <laughs> the 5.7 is pretty damn badass. And it looks like we're getting this uh, this pistol by coming in with uh, the 5.7s and the scout. And it is working a charm right now. MBK going to go down Ooh. to the headshot from Weber of his scout. And all of a sudden, it looks pretty amazing for the Brits as they make their way into what could be a round victory here in, on, the, uh, on the eco. They do have a three players with armor, two with helmets. So... They are in with a reasonable chance of doing this, and Smith does get tagged, and the bomb position has been exposed, which we'll see the CTs rotate. Um, Hudji does get taken out, and so does Fearless. So there's going to be a two versus two here, scouting an AK. This is entirely doable, especially with Smiths on 30 HP. And the uh, Kyoshima might just be a tiny bit above the threshold to survive a scout shot to the chest. I'll have to see how this actually goes. They've smoked off short to delay that approach. And we do have it. What looks like a save coming in from TLR. I've, I really felt like they could have made a pretty damn strong attempt for this one, but they've done a lot of damage economically. They've picked themselves up an AK-47, but I still feel like we we could have gotten more from them. Yeah, I mean, well, they're both they're on 48, 40 HP. They're, they won't they know what exactly what the HP is of the remaining players, but I think with 12-4, I mean, 
in my opinion, it's I think it, it, it's maybe going worth going for, but they couldn't realistically push the smoke. That's a problem. And once the smoke's out of the way, um, they didn't have a kit actually. Oh, which that's is the important yeah, thing. Yeah, that so would be it. The combination of the lack of kit and the smoke is going to give them very limited time to get those heads. And if they if their opponents hide from them and t burn the clock down, then uh, they're going to lose their weapons as well. So it was, you know, between a rock and a hard place. So that considered that they probably did make the the only decision they could make. Yeah, that kit, that, that is, that's, that's a lot of time. That's a lot of time and pressure. Either way, we're going to see LDLC making their way in for the B push. There go the guns. And indeed the guns are gone, very, very gone. And so are all the players with them. TLR got no one left here, that's just the last guy. And a uh, very quick round there from LDLC. And they move extremely close to just winning this game straight up. And it almost feels like this scoreline doesn't do the match justice. That, look, looking at it now, it's 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 really difficult. I don't think, you know, if if they, I think one of the one of the two players was close to the smoke as it was going off, but there isn't enough time to kind of process all the data that's available to you. You know, if you don't push that smoke, we're not going to have enough time to take the round, and then we're going to be at 14-4, and we've got to win every single round basically. So uh, very tough decisions here for TLR to make, but they do get a pick on NBK. So that is a good start for them here, but... Uh, and they saw it was going, he was rushing short, so they do know that this is a play for A, and it's like so far that they're, they're putting in some kills. Well, in fact, they're not. They've only got MBK still. It is LDLC getting all the frags, and Weber looking for the shot there with the AWP, not going to find it, and release over by the mid. We'll take down shocks, but perhaps all he can get from this is a weapon, and one more frag does actually take down Happy, and... It is definitely very hard times for them. Losing this round puts LDLC on match point. And the best that they can hope for it after that point is a, is a draw, as there are no overtimes in Star Series. Yeah, this is not going to be easy. And looking at the money, the next round is uh, going to be a bit of a jumble sell by here from the CTs. Terrorists win. <laughs> Almost, <laughs> gets by yep. Almost gets released, but... Uh, not quite. So we're going to be looking at. Are we looking at Mag Sevens here? We're looking at something. There it is. The Famas is coming in. All Famas is, apart from Weber's orb. In Weber fact, and Phil is no armor. Oh, he dropped a Famas actually, so <laughs> might as well. And he's going to go for the pick. He's going to miss the shot, but at least they're all alive for now. And he didn't get picked by Smith, so that's actually a pretty big result in of itself. Going to see the players going over to short, going to be able to call that to his teammates. And now, whoever's on long is going to be very vigilant to this A split push. And we see Weber coming in, switching up for the FAMAS, which that, that's a buy. Could have actually been very, very smart indeed. And Shock's going to come and peek over there. But that's such a hard position to get out of. He needs the distraction to be able to get out of that position and actually apply some pressure. But they are so in tune with this. They know exactly what's happening. And in fact, Weber able to actually take down Kyoshima, loses a good chunk of his health, but he is still standing. 34 points of health against four members of LDLC. It is soon to be over, and there it is. Lights out for Weber, and lights out for TLR. 16 to 4, the final score between the French team, LDLC, and the British, the new British squad, TLR. Yeah, um, you know, it's their first official match, so uh, there's a lot of work to be done there, as you can see. And again, it's like we saw from one shot um, earlier today. It's just a lot of information for them to digest, look at where things went wrong, look at where things can't be helped, you know, where the LDLC are just pulling out some crazy strats and running straight up mid like there's no tomorrow. Um, so there's a lot, of, a lot of information and learning process to be done from TLR and great play by LDLC, who seem to be on a run today, beating NIP 2-0 earlier in uh, some different matches. And they seem to be, you know, as, as we said earlier, they've made some structural changes since yesterday and they seem to be paying off at the moment. Certainly. Um, but we do have one more match tonight. It will be um, LDLC coming up again. So if you're fans of them, you won't want to miss this. I believe they're playing my XMG. So stay tuned, guys, for the next match after the break. <laughs> 